Hey, it's your Open Source Advocate, and I'm back with another video. And as promised, uh, this is another review or an overview, I'd rather say. I don't really want to say it's a review of a free and open source video editor that runs on Linux, of course. So moving forward, this is Kden Live. That's K-D-E-N Live. It's available on almost every Linux distribution. Um, and I've used it in the past. I had a few issues with it, you know, years ago. This is not recently, but years ago it just wasn't very stable. And I'm talking 2011, 2010. You know, I'd try to open it up and get it to run. And I was definitely a, a iMovie user at that point. So I was used to something very stable and very easy. Um, and at that time, it, it just wasn't for whatever reason. Lately, and I'm talking the last few years, I have had zero issues with Caden Live running on my systems. It has become extremely stable. They've done a ton of work to it, and it's a really, really nice video editor. I am not a professional video editor. I do this for fun, and um, I use tools that work for me. But I wanted to go over this one because it's really, it's great. It's, it's usually just already installed on a lot of uh, Linux distros anyways, so you may as well be used to it. I'm going to go over some of the basics today just so you can see it. So the last one I did on Shotcut, I don't feel like I did it justice because I, I did a little basic editing and kind of showed you my workflow. Um, this time I went and got some, some free uh, online clips uh, that, that, you, that we can use here and some music from, I believe I got, this, got these from the Free Music Archive um, that are, that are um, royalty-free music. So, uh, you know, when, when you see it, you'll see who made it and stuff like that. So if you're interested in their music, go out there and look it up. Uh, so first thing is dragging some stuff in. So I'll go over the interface real quick. So you've got um, kind of an area here for different effects and things like that that you can do on your video clips. You've got an area here for properties of the video clips, which is where you can edit some of the properties, and, and we'll kind of go through that briefly. You've got your player controls and your viewer area here. And then you've got your sound. Um, so as the, as the video is playing and you've got sound, you can kind of see the sound levels here to make sure you're not clipping the sound and making it too loud. Uh, so down here. You can actually see a clip monitor and then your project monitor. So you can switch back and forth between these and I'll kind of show you what that does. But you see it changes the interface a little bit. Below that you've got your timeline which is a pretty normal thing to have. And this is a, a non-linear video editor again. So we'll go through what that means and how this works. Um, so you've got two video tracks by default and two audio tracks. And one of the audio tracks is just kind of down below here. Um, so it's, it's a little harder to see. Uh, so just be aware it's here, it's down there, you just have to scroll to see it because of how I have the screen laid out and set up here, um, it's a little harder to spot. So right here, if you'll notice, there's a grab handle. So you can move this up, it's going to adjust how big your video viewing area is, so be aware of that. Um, if, if it doesn't bother you and you have a big monitor, maybe that's fine, it, 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 it's okay. Um, I like it where it's pretty large just because I do, again, have uh, visual problems, so this helps me quite a bit to be able to adjust that, which is great. You can adjust the size of these other areas as well. So just look for the double arrows side to side or the double arrows up to down to adjust different sections and sizes and things like that. All right, that's kind of the basic layout of the system here. So I'm going to go and open up my files and you can just click and drag files in. So I'm just going to select these for my video files and I'm going to select this bottom one. And I think we're going to use the epic heroic here um, audio I think these are the oh this is my so this one um, and I'll show you this I'm gonna use the mp3 so you can see what happens um, so I'm gonna drag all these over and it's gonna load them up here and you can see there's my audio file if I try to drag that down though um, you see it it, it kind of wants to go on a video track there's no video but it's got a, a, a image with it so that's kind of what we run into is that it it really oops um, doesn't doesn't want to go onto an audio track by itself. So I'm gonna escape out of that, I think, yeah. So what you can do is right click, and when you right click on the track, you'll see this extract audio. And I'm just gonna click here on the wave. And now I've got just the audio file, so I can drag that down when I'm ready. Uh, first, so, so you can see we're looking at the clip monitor here. Um, if I click on the video clip, you can see my different clips. And I can play through these clips, so I have this this cool clip that somebody did with a drone where it flies in and flies past this guy and it'll go out over the water for a few seconds uh, which is pretty cool that's a nice clip so I just grabbed random clips that kind of looked good together and then we'll go through and kind of edit these up to, to kind of look nice together so I'm gonna drag this one because that'll be kind of my first clip I'm not gonna use the entire clip out of the gate and we will let that just drag onto the timeline there 
And then I'm going to go get this one with the feet in the sand because it looks like it kind of goes. I'm going to drag it down to my second timeline and I'll show you why we do that. So that's why this is nonlinear. So first of all, nonlinear means that it's also non-destructive most of the time. So I'm going to take this and shorten it up. Maybe. There we go. So I'm going to shorten this clip down quite a bit. Um, I kind of want to see what the clip looks like from the beginning now. So I'm going to use a space bar to start the playhead. And you can see it's playing on my project timeline now. And I want to see kind of how far that gets. Um, that's pretty good. I might make it a little bit shorter still. So I can just drag the playhead back here at the, at the top. And I'm going to drag this back a little bit more. And now I'm going to drag over my other clip. And... I'm going to overlap them slightly, and this is going to create my transition. So if I leave them like this when I play, and I'll just start here at the end. So when this plays, you're going to see a hard cut. Boom. So I don't like that hard cut. I want it to be a softer cut. So I'm going to come here and overlap these, and you'll see you get a, a little coloring on this arrow down here. If you click on that, it creates your cross dissolve between those two clips. You don't do it on the same track. You do it on two different tracks. Now I'm going to take my, my other video clip and I'm going to shorten it down quite a bit here. Um, and then I'm going to go grab a different clip. So I'm going to grab this clip of the birds flying. Again, this will be a hard cut so you can see the, the slow motion and then boom. I don't like the hard cut, um, but I don't want a huge transition there. So I'm going to overlap them slightly. And then again on the upper clip, just click that and it'll create that transition. And then I'm going to shorten that down a little not too much. And then I'm going to come back um, I think to my uh, actually feet in the sand for just a second here. There we go. So now I'm going to shorten this from the front so I'm going to drag backwards and I want to see how long this is. Yeah, so somebody just filmed their feet kicking the sand, which is kind of cool. We'll overlap that a little bit. And then again, click on that upper clip to create the transition. And I'm going to go back to my birds. Um, actually, I'm going to go back to here. And I'm going to take the last part of this clip. And I'm going to shrink this down. Let's see how it looks. So we can just see how much we have left here. Right about there is where I want, so I'm just going to shorten this down to the playhead there. And I'm going to drag it over. And again, click in that corner. And then my last clip here is with some really pretty sunflowers with a drone fly over. And we are going to... Give that a little bit more of a transition and again on the upper clip just click so now we've got a nice video set here so we'll kind of let this go so you get your starting fly in and you get the video playing with the feet kicking the sand and then it comes out to some birds that are getting scared these are all different locations but if somebody doesn't know it i mean this could all be the same island where this is happening right so we get back to the feet kicking, we get the rest of our flyover, getting out over the water, and then we transition to it going out over the flowers, which is cool. Okay, cool. So now we've got our music, so we split out our audio. We're just going to drag that down to this third track down here. Went too low. There we go. I'm going to drag this over, and I'm going to drag back the end of the audio here. Oop, that's my playhead. I'm just trying to drag the end of the audio. There we go. And we'll do a fade on the audio here in a minute. Let's drag our playhead back. And let's just see how this sounds. Hopefully you'll be able to hear this sound. If not, I'll have to reroute it. Okay, so there's a, a bit of a incoming hit right here, 
and you can see that in the waveform down here where it spikes. So what I want to do is I want to kind of adjust all my clips. So this takes a little bit of just eyeballing it. Um, this is going to go away for a minute. So I'm using a Mac keyboard, so I've got to. So you just delete these cross dissolves by hand. And I'm going to move this. And I'm going to move my playhead where it lines up with that pretty well. Get this lined up with my playhead. And then I'm just going to extend my video out just a little more. I'm going to delete this one. And I'm going to. Oh, missed my adjustment there. So now I'll adjust all my clips back kind of where I had them. And then I'll click here to get my transitions. And then we'll adjust our music out a little. So now if we go back a little. Okay, so we're going to play through this. I've got the speakers turned up. Hopefully the mic will pick this up for you. So there you go. Um, that's Caden Live. It, it's not super difficult. It's pretty pretty straightforward, fairly simple to use. Let's see if we can put a fade on the music here. All right, so here you can barely see it, but there's a slightly lighter color where it's going to fade out the audio. So we'll start just a little bit back here and we'll let it play. And there you have it. Fades out the audio just like we wanted. So you basically click, drag it down to the track, and drop it on the track that you want to use it on. Up here you can see there's different filters. So they've got filters for video, filters for audio, all filters. So you can kind of click around and see what those filters are to do different things on the different tracks. Um, Caden Live, it's pretty nice. It's actually very, very easy to use. Um, I created this project really quickly and cut a few things together. I wish mine were uh, this simple. Sometimes they are and sometimes they're not. But if you're out there and you're uh, amateur or a professional and you're looking for something that's quick and easy, I highly recommend giving Caden Live a try. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, share it with your friends. Otherwise, I'll talk to you next time.